The most effective way to move your design process forward is a pen and a paper. It's not AI chats or 3D drawing and construction. Often the fastest way is just to sketch your thoughts and ideas. As I'm building this machine, I draw a lot of quick sketches. That's something I really enjoy doing. In the end, I collect them and put them in my archive, here in my shared studio space in Leipzig. If you like my content, you can support me via PayPal Me. We want the structure as rigid and stiff so that as little as possible creates any artifacts or resonances. That's why I decouple the frame from the box that has lots of swingable surfaces. The four screws that connect the frame to the box each get a rubber grommet for decoupling and a plastic sleeve to guide the screw through the grommet. First I need to unscrew the frame from the box and take the machine out of the suitcase. The holes need to be enlarged, therefore I printed some templates. These help me get the holes in the right position and guide the drill to the exact spot. The grommets and plastic sleeve get clipped inside and later on the frame will go back into place. Furthermore, I wanted to improve some 3D printed parts and sweat them out with a better design. After losing the turntable, I made a plan for what parts I want to change or add to my design. The first parts I changed are the four 3D printed mounts for the feed carriage system. I used these small stainless steel circles as a counter bearing for the grub screws. The pressure point of the screw is thus better disrupted within the 3D printed part. After I changed the parts on the upper side of the frame, I started dismounting the parts on the lower side. I have also added some thread blocker here and there. After all the lower frame mounts are replaced, it's time to put the belt back in the pulleys. Now it's time to get rid of these crappy angled brackets. The black angle pieces are much more precise, stiff and already keep the frame centered and squared. And they don't look that chubby. After an endless back and forth, I actually replaced all the brackets. I even included some more T-slot nuts to fasten elements of panel covers later in one of the next episodes. Now I can access everything better and install the bell tensioner and motor mount for the turntable drive more easily. The rest of the drive gets installed again, this time with the correct measurement and a proper 90 degree angle. The motor of the drive unit is mounted on a rail to tension the belt more easily.
These small 3D printed helpers connect the profiles at orthogonal T-junction connections. With all the screws they are particularly rigid and can be aligned precisely. First, I check the tilt and alignment with a 90 degree angle tool. In a later episode, I will adjust the tilt of the turntable shaft in more detail. Along the frame, I install these 3D printed fasteners for cable routing. To fasten the audio and stop or motor cables, I use cable ties. Now the lever arm and lowering system get a redesign and are dismounted. The new version has some improvements, such as elongated holes and a kind of rail and slot system for better fine-tuning the cutter head centricity and placement. To adjust the fitting and play of the drop down bearing, I installed a clamp with two screws. Now I can precisely control a lot more adjustment in the system. For the lowering handle and transport lock mechanism, I swapped the already worn out PLA parts for the better PETG 3D printable material. This is much harder and does not wear out as fast. The lever arm itself gets a design overhaul too. The shaft is now clamped into the 3D printed part. Some long screws and a better design make this part much less flexible. Now everything can be installed back onto the carriage system. With the new design the unit can be adjusted precisely in one dimension only. After some tests I noticed that the oil pressure cylinder slow lowering device sometimes gets stuck after not being used. So I inserted a small spring to give it a little kick just in the first few millimeters of movement. Now I can fasten the screws through the grommet decoupling sleeves. The frame can be moved slightly in any direction so it can wobble around on rubber mounts. This will help to reduce build-up resonances in the box. The lever arm gets a counter bearing made out of stainless steel as well. So the cutter head can be changed more often without wearing down the 3D printed arm. After this I can test the lowering mechanism and the new spring inside the slow lowering oil cylinder. To prevent the audio cables from getting tangled up with the feed system, there is this long guide channel which I am installing here. The last part is the end stop which gets a new location. Now that I've cleaned up everything, the machine looks much more organized. In the next episode, we will take a look at the milling of the final turntable, the design of the casing panels and the controls of the machine. I hope you enjoyed watching and see you next time.